Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal, and this is Homemaking on the Homestead. And today is Friday, and I do my chatty kitchen table talk video, coffee with Crystal with y'all. I have lots of little things to share with you, as well as just a little bit on finding beauty in the little things in life. All right, ladies, grab your cup of coffee, and let's chat. If you saw my last video, you know that spring kind of hit our area all of a sudden, and uh, boy, I tell you, I have just been loving it. We've had probably five or six days of just absolutely gorgeous weather. Uh, after lots of rain and cold, it just has felt really nice to warm up and just be able to even sit outside and just soak in that sun, get some vitamin D action going here. And um, I have, and I think today is the last day. So we're back to rain, but you know, that is okay. Spring in the Pacific Northwest is a lot like that. It is a stretch of, of warm, dry days and then a stretch of rain. And that kind of goes on and on and on with the dry days getting longer, the rainy days getting shorter until eventually we have summer. And that is spring. And you know, it is okay in another way too, is that if we dry out too fast in this area and don't get enough rain, then we are in a really high fire danger uh, zone. We live pretty much kind of in the mountains, forested areas and forested areas all around us. And the, uh, in the summertime, the threat of forest fires is really high often. And so the, the longer that we can stay wet, the better. So in the meantime, I am just grateful and thankful and feel very blessed to enjoy these nice warm days. My husband even got brave enough to uh, kind of take a quick dip in our pond <laughs> last night because he had been out mowing and working on the property. And uh, it's too cold for me. He put the thermometer in the pond and it was 51 degrees. So our pond is spring fed and so the, ground, the water comes up from the ground flows into the pond and it makes for very cold water. It doesn't usually really warm up till closer to June or July and then I will be brave enough to get in. But in the meantime, I just cheered him on. <laughs> all right, ladies, so the next thing I always talk about is what do you all have going on in your kitchen? Have you been doing any baking, any cooking? Have you, uh, did you have a traditional St. Patrick's Day dinner? I bought the corned beef, I bought some little red potatoes. I had all set up, uh, bought some sauerkraut, everything. I was really excited to do it. And then my husband ended up uh, having some tooth problems. So uh, a tooth problem. And it was something that kind of hit him when we were out traveling and it just got kept getting worse and worse. So had to make a trip to the dentist and the dentist looked at it and said, yeah, it was, it was his wisdom tooth problem. And and it was the last one he had, and so the dentist said that probably the best solution is to take it out. So we did. He had it pulled, and of course, it takes time to heal. And I've been kind of working on the theme of just soft, easy-to-chew food so it doesn't irritate the gums and doesn't irritate the area. And it's just taken him a while to heal. And so I decided to put off our St. Patrick's Day dinner to where another time when chewing on meat like that would be a little easier for him so mostly it's been leftovers casseroles soups and you know leftover soft things and canned veg vegetables and all that um, and so I never got my thanks my St. Patrick's Day dinner made however it's getting better and I foresee it in the next day or two but um, anyway did you have one did you have a St. Patrick's Day dinner um, anything else exciting going on in your kitchen lately I am um, I did a whole bunch of baking before we went to California to see my grandkids, so I had baked a ton of cookies and other things, and, and then I took those all down with me, and oh, my grandkids love that, even my kids love that, so I haven't really gotten back into the swing of doing a whole lot of baking. We really don't need anything right now, so I think my desire to bake uh, outweighs the rate at which we can go through it, you know. So, but I was thinking it would be nice to do a pie. I haven't done a pie in a while, and I just love a good brown sugar pie. And uh, and the uh, uh, pat and pan cast uh, pat and pan pie crust recipe, I shared about it. Uh, 
a few videos ago, a few months ago. But anyway, so I'm, maybe I'll do that today, tomorrow, not sure. But that's kind of on my, my radar. And then, of course, the next question I always ask you guys is, oh, what's for dinner? What are you serving for dinner tonight? Again, keeping on the soft food theme, I am doing some uh, salmon patties and some sort of potatoes and it's probably some sort of cooked vegetable, maybe one of my canned vegetables or uh, frozen veggies that I roast or something like that. So dinner tonight's gonna be super, super simple. But please do know, let me know down in the comments there what you guys are having for dinner, what you got cooking in your kitchen. It's always fun to read. I really enjoy that. And I know other ladies enjoy it too, to come by and get some inspiration and, and uh, to see what, what do we all have cooking in our kitchen. I think cooking food, uh, for our husband, for our families, whatever, is just so basic. And it is something in this fast food society that seems to be lost in its significance. I think it's just so valuable. And the more we share what we do, the more we can encourage and inspire other people on what a blessing it is to have a good home-cooked food. Okay, the other thing I wanted to share with you guys today was to talk to you about a frugal and very effective ant killer. So one of the things that happens in the springtime here is uh, the rain and the warmer temperatures begin and the ants just start to explode. And they make their way into the house. I have, you know, I've gone outside looking where is the ant hole, you know, coming from so I could do pour something down there to kill it. but. And sometimes I can find it, sometimes I can't, who knows. And what ends up happening is they make their way into my kitchen. So I have been noticing that lately and I've been killing off the little ones that I see. Uh, and it, so it hasn't really seemed like it's getting out of control, but I'm monitoring it and watching it. But I really wanted to share something that I used several years ago. So I had a really bad ant invasion that year like literally they were everywhere and I could kind of see the corner where they were coming into the kitchen and so I went online to try to find a way to combat this uh, I think I'd even put out some some like ant hotel type things or whatever and it didn't really do anything so I thought well there's got to be an easy way to do this a, a DIY what can I do and I found one so it's a combination of peanut butter and borax. So apparently the ants love peanut butter and I can say from my own past experience, they certainly did. And you mix it at a ratio, hold on, I wrote it down here. I knew I wouldn't remember. Uh, three parts peanut butter and one fourth part borax. So when I made it originally, I used uh, three tablespoons of peanut butter and one tablespoon of borax. Borax is the 20 mule team laundry booster. You can find it in the laundry section. Uh, it's very inexpensive and it can be used for your laundry if you don't already have some. Anyway, you mix that together and uh, that small amount that I made actually was way more than I needed. So you really could probably get down to a very, very small amount. Of course, if the, you know you have a huge infestation, maybe not so much. But anyway, and then I would I took it and I put it out onto some pieces of tin foil and set it right where the ants were coming into my house, uh, into the kitchen. Now, what the online and I do not remember where I found this. I had it written down, but I don't remember what website I found it at. But what they said is that your, your problem could get worse before it gets better, and that was true. So um, it did not take those ants any amount of time to find my little peanut butter mixture. And of course, then they tell all the other ants in the colony, and then pretty soon you've got ants everywhere. And I did. I literally had a thick line highway of ants coming down and ants going back with it. But the great thing about it is that they take it into the colony and other ants feed on it and it will kill the whole entire colony. It may take a couple days to get it back under control. And that was the case for me. It, it was actually less than, it was like 24 hours later I had gone from that thick line of ants coming up and down to a very thin stream. I left it there for probably a week or more and eventually there were no more ants coming in. So it did the job, it just took a little bit of time, 
but it was very effective and extremely frugal. So I'm passing that on in case any of you guys are dealing with springtime ant infestations in your kitchen. So the, uh, the other thing I wanted to share and just talk about today is beauty in the little things. I, when we're homemakers, I, what I notice as I visit homemaking uh, YouTube channels, websites, blogs, whatever, is there is this sense of making everything beautiful. I have no problem with that. I mean, it oftentimes does look absolutely gorgeous. And people's homes are just beautiful. On the flip side, for many people, it could all of a sudden make you feel inadequate or it can make you feel like, oh, I need more. I need to do this. I need to do that in order for my home to look beautiful. And it just got me really thinking about, about that a lot in that that, you know, finding beauty in small things, ha to me, has more value than making my house look like house beautiful. I live in a very old house. It, in fact, it is probably, if not this year, next year, going to be 100 years old. This house has been painted, repaired, remodeled uh, for a very long time even since we've lived here and we've done a lot to it, but there's always in unfinished projects everywhere. My house is far from perfect and I am not any way near a house beautiful type home decorator. Uh, I have a girlfriend that is and she does amazing things, comes by it very naturally and everything she touches turns beautiful, <laughs> and, you know, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, for me, I could be, you know, like discouraged because I can't, I don't easily create those types of things. Or I could choose to find beauty in other things and in other ways. One of the things is that I find beauty in my old house in, a, in ways such as memories. My house holds so many memories for me. I find beauty in remembering those busy days where the doors were always open, close, open, close, kids in and out, in and out, lots of activity. There is a special beauty about those days that I really appreciate as I look back. I find beauty in my kitchen that cooked probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of loaves of bread and baked many, many batches of cookies for my family and pots of soup and home-cooked meals. Those, to me, are beautiful memories. And finding those moments of beauty in my old house it warms my heart. It's, it's more to me than, means more to me than looking at something aesthetically that somebody else might consider beautiful. And even right now, to remember the beauty in the quiet days of an empty nest and even to find beauty in all those unfinished projects. I have areas in my house that need to be painted. I have areas that uh, trim never got put around. My husband was replacing the windows and he just ran out of time to be able to do that. And then life comes along and then we don't get back to those projects. But yet there's a beauty in that. It's a house that is being loved. It is a house that is being appreciated and cared for even even with its uh, 1970s dated bathroom you know it is like it's okay because there's a beauty in all of that if we choose to see it that way i was recently taking some time to read through this book the life-giving home by sally and sarah clarkson i think sarah's her daughter sally clarkson has written Clarkson has written uh, a lot of books. She has a podcast. I listen to her podcast. This is really the first book of hers that I have ever um, started to read. Now, I haven't picked this as my book of the month or anything, but a lot of times what I'll do is just kind of pick and choose chapters and read things. And so the whole concept of the finding beauty in the little things uh, came as I was reading one of her chapters. Uh, it was titled the book of uh, the month of March. And so that's what got my attention. And she has this uh, section in here called Beauty and Home. And she talks about when we think of the word beauty, it's often, as she called it, the Martha Stewart home type of um, everything's perfect, everything's gorgeous. And then she goes on to talk about uh, beauty and home life. Uh, that beauty that is on the level of the kitchen table, a child's bedroom, the back porch. What we miss in the surface images, though that perfect home, 
is an under, understanding of beauty, not as a veneer we apply to the surface of our lives or an ideal only to be attained by, extra, by the extraordinary, but as the tangible daily outgrowth of spiritual values that we hold most deeply. And then she goes on to say, when I speak of beauty in this chapter, I don't mean the ideal. I mean the real loveliness lurking in the corners of the ordinary, a bowl of apples, a child's face, a mason jar of wildflowers. And she goes on and she kind of takes it in a, in a little bit different direction than what I'm doing today because I'm kind of condensing it with my own thoughts as well. But I think it's important that we remember that beauty is, and a beautiful home is not a competition. A competition with everything you see online, other people's homes you go to, the magazines. But true beauty, in my mind, is oftentimes almost a literal stopping to smell the roses. Seeing the things that are around us. We often do not see it. That's where that saying comes from. You know, you walk back and forth by that garden all the time and not once do you actually even really stop to notice those roses, smell them. It's, it is that connection that we have of the things that are around us and the things that we already have and the beauty that God has already given us, whether it's simple things in our home, whether it's, you know, little flowers outside. And then when it comes to beauty and that spiritual side, what I say is stop and pay attention. See all the beauty that God has already put into your life and around your life in all the different ways. And take a moment to truly and honestly be grateful for that. And once we do that, I think we will be able to see beauty in a whole different light. As I read that and was thinking about that, this whole thing, it made me think about like Anne of Green Gables. And there's other books out there, but Anne of Green Gables stands out in my mind because she was just so into all the beautiful blossoms and the trees and the, even the snow on the ground. It's like she had this heightened awareness of all of the, all the things around her, all the beauty that was around her. And of course, after you read that book, suddenly you're like, oh wow, that grass is so green. Oh, look at that little patch of flowers over there. Oh, look at this, look at that. And I know even when I'm out walking and doing things with my grandchildren, I always take a lot of time to stop and just point things out as I'm walking by. It might be a, you know, a type of flower. It might just be a gorgeous view we're seeing. It might be something small and insignificant. It might be a group of bugs on the ground. And of course, a lot of that has come from my homeschooling days because I did the same thing with my children. And just to make us all aware of our surroundings and all the beauty that God already gives us. Okay, ladies, I think that about covers it for today's Coffee with Crystal. And I truly hope that you found something in today's video that was helpful, enjoyable, encouraging, and uh, make sure you please comment below and join in on the conversation and share anything good that's happening in your kitchen, any thoughts you have on the topic I talked about, anything that you would like to share at all. Introduce yourself. I love that. I keep meeting more and more of you and it's really fun and I appreciate it so much. But for now, I am going to get on with my day and um, yeah, I got a list, my to-do list already written out this morning and I got homework, home housework, home things work to do, <laughs> however you want to say it. It's time for me to move on with my day, ladies. Anyway, thank you all for stopping by, and I hope you go out and have an awesome, amazing, blessed day and a weekend ahead. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.